what is PCOS? All right, um, it's it's a complex endocrine, and by endocrine means that um, um, there's hormones that are produced in one place, and then this elaborates all over the body. So um, it's a complex disorder. Mm. Uh, the the basis of of making a diagnosis most of the time is the characteristic appearance of the ovaries on ultrasound scan. Okay. So. Yes. So, uh, but it's it's not just an ovarian disorder. It has effects on other parts of the body as well. Okay. So the effects are not just limited to the woman's ovaries. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. It, there's no single way to say um, how it is inherited or whatever. But there's there's so many genetic things that come into play with it. Hmm. So. Because there's no single thing to say this is what causes it, like um, malaria is caused by the Anopheles mosquito. Mm-hmm. So so if you are able to get rid of the mosquito, you get rid of malaria. Mm-hmm. So there's no particular way to say this is what causes polycystic ovarian syndrome mm-hmm. and then this is how to avoid it. Now, you said it doesn't affect only the ovaries. Tell me more about that. Where else does it affect? What else does it affect? <laughs> okay. So the the um, when a woman has polycystic ovarian syndrome, there are many other things that will eventually come into play in her body. Okay. So there are things like the hyperinsulinemia, elevated levels of insulin. We all need insulin to break down our food. Okay. But for women who have polycystic ovaries, they need a higher amount of insulin to be able to get normal, you know, blood glucose levels. Mm. So that in itself has effects on, you know, increasing the risk for a cardiac, that's a heart problem. Okay. We call it heart disease. Um, increases the risk of, you know, obesity from the hyperinsulinemia. And then um, because they also have this infrequent menstruation, hmm. so the lining of the uterus builds up for much longer, that predisposes them to having... Um, um, problems within the lining of the womb, where we call endometrial hyperplasia, and then if it's unchecked and goes on for a long time, it can actually be the focus of an endometrial cancer. That's uh, cancer affecting the lining of the womb. Mm. So it's not just ovaries, mm. you know. The different things, the different hormones that come into play also have other things they get involved in. The commonest, the commonest symptom is infrequent menstruation. Okay. So, um, when it comes to fertility in the reproductive age group, and that's defined by women between ages 15 and 49, mm-hmm. it is assumed that if a woman is having a menses regularly, mm-hmm. then she's ovulating regularly. Okay. In about 90, 90% of cases, yeah, that's true. But there are some women who still have their menses regularly, but do not ovulate regularly. Okay. So they may not know. But in those who are not even having their menses regularly, that on itself should make them go see a doctor. Hmm. Okay. So a woman, every woman should have a menses every 21 to 35 days. That's the normal. Mm-hmm. So if it's longer than that, mm. maybe the menses comes every 60 days, mm. then the woman should actually be worried and go see a doctor to say, well, I think there's something off because I'm not getting my period as I should, mm. you know, in the longest time of 35 days. Mm. Other things that may come into play um, when you're asking a woman to pay attention to symptoms is acne, um, women who have polycystic ovaries ha- usually do have acne. Okay. Um, they have some increase in the body hair. We call that hair shooting. Okay. And the, those those things are reflections of the hormones uh, because there is a higher level of um, what we we'll call masculine hormones. Okay. <laughs> so the body hair growth will be increased, mm. acne increased. Mm. You know, so they begin to um, say, well, I, I think this, my girlfriends don't have this, I do. Maybe I should, you know, get it checked out. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, although most women who have, or let me say, a number of women who have polycystic ovaries are on the obese side, we still have really slim women who have polycystic ovaries. Okay. So um, the, the advice 
for losing weight will not apply to a very slender person, person. to start right exactly yeah so acne increased body hair growth infrequent menses um obesity that you know just seems stubborn you are doing diet you are doing exercise and it's just not going mm. you may have an underlying hormonal basis for it and that should prompt a young woman to get herself checked out when it's diagnosed what are the treatment options treatment option is tailored to the particular woman mm. so um Oh, doctor, I'm here. I've been married for 10 years. I don't have a baby. And then you, after doing all the investigations, you arrive at polycystic ovaries. You then ask, what is important to you? Is it the baby or regular menses? Then the woman may say, oh, well, I think it should be regular menses for a while. And then I'll come back in another five years for the baby. That's fine. And the woman may say, oh, it's the baby. I don't even care about not seeing the menses. That's also fine. Now, the woman may say, oh, well, not really. I've had all my kids and, you know, um, I'm not particularly crazy about having a message. So it's not that she has any particular problem mm. or concern. Mm. And then it just goes on to, you know, um, lifestyle changes. Make sure your blood lipids are fine. Make sure you do your sugar checks. You don't have undiagnosed diabetes. And then at least... A woman with polycystic ovaries should menstruate minimum once in three months to avoid having that um, buildup of the lining of the womb that may become a focus for a cancer in the future. So such a woman doesn't need a baby, doesn't need regular menses, but to avoid that, she should have a bleed once in three months. So the management, it's, 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 it's it, different. It's different.